Hi, I'm Tessa Davis. I'm a paediatric emergency medicine consultant. Today we're going to talk about a specific type of finger extensor tendon injuries, which is mallet finger. In a previous video, we looked at how to assess extensor tendon injuries in fingers. And one of the things we discussed was how the injuries are classified into zones. Mallet finger is a zone one injury. So it's at the DIPJ. It's a partial or complete avulsion of the terminal extensor tendon from its insertion at the distal phalanx. And this commonly happens because you get a sudden flexion of an extended DIPJ. You can also get it secondary to a crush mechanism. Mallet finger can be an open or closed injury. It can be with or without a fracture. Patients normally present with um, a flexion deformity at the distal phalanx, and so they simply can't extend their finger at the DIPJ, and the joint itself can be swollen and bruised. In children, it's common that this injury happens due to an avulsion fracture at the distal phalangeoepiphysis, because that's the insertion point of the terminal extensor tendon. Mallet fingers can be described using this classification scheme, which essentially splits it up into the, depending on the type of injury it is. So how do we treat this? Well, it's important to speak early to plastics to get their advice on management. And the management broadly goes into either non-operative or operative. Non-operative treatment is going to be for closed acute injuries, and these could be with or without fractures. Normally, these would be managed with six to eight weeks of extension splinting at the DIPJ. And after this, you get gentle active flexion. This is an example of the type of DIPJ uh, extension splinting that we have in my hospital, but you'll probably have seen different types, and that's fine. The goal of them all is to extend at the DIPJ, but allow flexion at the PIPJ. And in fact, a 2004 Cochrane review found insufficient evidence to support one particular type of splint over another when treating mallet injuries. In fact, they all achieved similar outcomes. What was really important to a successful outcome was patient compliance. Make sure you tell your patients that if they do take the splint off to wash or whatever, that they, it's important that they keep their DIPJ in extension at the time. Some injuries will be treated operatively. Uh, so open injuries are going to be managed by surgical repair. And some closed injuries could be considered for surgical management if there's joint subluxation or if there's an avulsion fracture of more than 30 to 50% of the articular surface. There is a complication, though and it's swan neck deformity. This is exactly why correct management of an acute mallet injury is so important because if it's poorly managed or it's untreated, you've got a chronic terminal extensor tendon injury and that can lead to swan neck deformity. And this deformity is caused by prolonged DIPJ flexion and you get dorsal subluxation of the lateral bands. You get PIPJ hyperextension. So we've gone over what a mallet injury is, how it's caused, how it presents, how to identify it and how to manage it. Thank you.